And good evening, everybody. Welcome to Beck Stadium on the campus of St. Andrews Episcopal School in southwest Austin, Texas. We've got boys lacrosse action for tonight between the St. Andrews uh, Highlanders and the St. Michael's Crusaders. My name is Merle Bertrand, Vipe Live Broadcast Director, joined by producer extraordinaire Kevin McAdams and the rock and rev Randy Fry back at the comfy, cozy K-Max Studios, better known, or K-Max Studios, Vipe Live Studios, uh, better known as his living room sofa. And uh, Kevin, this is a perfect game for the Rock and Rev. He actually is a practicing minister. We got St. Michael's, St. Andrews. What more could you ask for if you're the Rock and Rev? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> God bless us all in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go. But uh, yeah, we're ready to go here tonight. Uh, this is going to be our first boys lacrosse game of the season. Uh, this We were scheduled to be on the air a couple of weeks ago, and I think there, were, there may have been a a health issue, and then, of course, the snowpocalypse hit and pushed everything back a couple of weeks. But we're finally going to get a boys game in here tonight. We've had a couple of girls games. Uh, the girls fighting Lake Travis off the other night, falling in overtime 8-7 to seven, and opening the season a couple of nights before that against the Fiscal School of Dallas. The boys coming into tonight's game with a mark of 2-0 and on the season. And uh, let me look that up here real quick. I had it, and I got off the screen. There we go. See what they've done so far this season. 2-0, they knocked off Trinity School at Trinity School up in the Fort Worth area by a score of 14-9. And then uh, the same day, they knocked off Fort Worth Country Day by a score of 13-4 to get off to a 2-0 start here tonight as they get ready to take on the Crusaders. The Crusaders come in here with a mark of 1-1. One one. They lost their opener to Vista Ridge UIL School here in the greater Austin area and then uh, fell to Cedar Park by a score of 19-4. So uh, that's where we are here. And... Uh, I am going to forewarn you, as I did on the girls' game the other night. I don't know a lot about lacrosse. Learning it as I go. I streamed quite a bit over the years, both with Ron Rock and done some stuff with the St. Andrews and that kind of thing. But it's in terms of calling it, I'm still learning it. So well, you know about ten times more than me. <laughs> I just I, found out last night that when they start the game, that's called the draw. Called the draw, right? And it's not a stick; it's a cross, right? Oh, um, I didn't. I, okay. But uh, other than that, I didn't. I actually didn't know until today, and I don't know if this is something new that they've added or something I just wasn't aware of, that there's actually a shot clock now in boys lacrosse. So that's kind of, I wish they would implement that in basketball so you can get back to real basketball instead of all that kind of stuff. But I know the girls' game and the boys' game used to be dramatically different. The girls used to do what I called the stop start. Every foul, everybody had to freeze into position and start uh -huh. over again, and they got rid of that a couple of years ago, mercifully. So it's a little closer, but there are still some differences. Boys' game obviously much more physical uh, but uh, yeah so bear with us learn as we go here tonight we'll at least be able to get you the main uh, the main highlights try to let you know who scores fortunately Kevin and I are getting kind of long in the twos but fortunately the numbers on both sets of jerseys are very large so you can actually read them from up here a cool night here in Austin Texas nice day God, I got up to about 80 degrees today but it's cooled off the breeze is blowing in pretty good tonight. By the way, St. Andrews is frenemy St. Stephen's in action tonight across town. Brian Reba the call over there as the St. Stephen's Spartans, uh, Spartans boys knocked off Cedar Park by a score of 13 to five. Their girls are about ready to get underway. So uh, St. Stephen's and St. Andrews, frenemies if you will, to quote Darrell Waltrip. And uh, friends during football season, but other than that, pretty good arch rivals, but they always like to keep track of what each other's doing. So 13 to five, St. Stevens with the win tonight in boys action over Cedar Park. Daryl Waltrip, I thought that was from Mean Girls. Maybe he stole it from Mean Girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're about, thankfully, about a minute away from uh, the pregame ceremonies. Happy to have you with us here on a thurs Thursday night, right? Yeah, Thursday night. I get so used to that Tuesday night, Friday night routine. It's unusual to be out on a Thursday night, but happy to be here. Well, and thankfully that wind that's been right in our face ever since we got here has settled down. It so. just died out of nowhere, didn't it? Yeah. I hope it keeps up. I'll be back out here Saturday uh, for the SAS relays. Going to try our hand at a little track coverage. It'll be single camera, so we'll we'll get what we get, but... We'll try to bring some of that action to you. I think it starts at about 9 o'clock Saturday morning. I'd love to join you for that, but uh, I will be uh, filming my five-year-old nephew's very first baseball game. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'll see if he can actually hit the tee. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
we had a guy the other night. I've been doing base calling baseball games now for what 14 years since the, the early days of K-Max Sports. I've never called a no-hitter. His first game taken over for Dripping Springs baseball, and he gets a no-hitter. No I way. Hate, I hate that guy. Everybody hates that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so we are about ready. St. Andrews, the home team. They are in the white jerseys and shorts with the powder blue numbers outlined in black. If you happen to be listening instead of watching the video. And uh, St. Michael's, I can't tell if that's their dark maroon or if that's black with the white numerals and the white lettering. And the traditional pregame checkout here going over the crosses. And this is sort of the rough equivalent to the coin toss in football. Can I make the obvious dumb joke? Go for it. We're at a parochial school. Does that make them holy crosses? <laughs> it is if you say it is. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Forgive me. They're never going to let me in here again. <laughs> Sorry. One big difference between the girls' game and the boys' game, the girls play two 25-minute halves. The boys play four 12-minute quarters. NCAA rules for the most part, they do have some highly technical differences that go way, way over my head. But we're about ready to get this one underway. I do already see some names or some numbers out of the field for St. Michael's that aren't on their roster, so forgive me for that if you're a St. Michael's fan tuning in. And we are underway. Still fighting for the draw, the ground ball, and controlled by the Crusaders coming right to left. Over on the right wing. On the attack, the shot on goal and score. A quick strike for the Crusaders. First goal of the night scored by Jack Urano, junior attacker, and St. Michael's draws first blood here, just underway, 11.42 to go. It took 18 seconds for the Crusaders to dent the scoring book. In goal four, St. Michael's is Gus Stratton, I believe, number 25, just a freshman. And this time, that ball is loose over on the far side, scooped up by the Highlanders. Checked away, a loose ball. And St. Michael's comes up with it over on the far side. Out on top. It was right. This is James Me Megs with it, number three. The far side again. Back behind the net. Plenty of room behind the net. If you're used to watching hockey, which this sport is similar to, a lot more room behind the net and lacrosse. Oh, a hard check. Knocked him off the ball. Clean check. Try to swat it inbounds, and it'll be a, oh, I think they're going to say, yeah, you can hear the official, my bad. Yeah, it's going to go to St. Andrews. And the Highlanders will take over. Long, dangerous outlet pass. And that's going to go out of bounds, give the ball back to the Crusaders with 10, 10 38 to go in this first half, uh, first quarter. Mason Smith to inbound it. Got an extra ball in the field to play. I see it over here on the right side. They prearrange balls on the sideline to speed up play when a ball goes out of bounds. And that one happened to get kicked into play. Dylan Brucker with it on the left side. Out on top. The to Mason Smith over on the far side to Caleb Eby. Back behind the net.
Over on the left side, that ball gets away. And can they keep it in bounds? They do, nice play backing it up. Camped out behind the net is Ted Brasher for St. Michael's. And a violation gives the ball to the Highlanders up quickly and nice save to keep it in bounds. Check that out of bounds, but he managed to throw it in bounds before the turnover. Highlanders with their first offensive opportunity tonight. The shot into the net and a score. Happened fast, but I think that was Liam Cohagen with that goal. And we're tied up one apiece with 9.41 to go first quarter. But boy, what a place here on the sideline. I think that was Cade Kilbride went on the attack, was checked out of bounds, but he managed to throw the ball and the cross and everything in bounds and maintain possession before he went out of bounds. Draw controlled by the Highlanders. Cullen Dawkins with it into the attack zone over on the right wing. Back behind the net. Out over on the left side. Working to set up the offense, maybe looking for the wraparound. That's what he tries backhand and knocked away. Nice job by the Crusader goalie. Highlanders will maintain possession here in the near side. Between the pipes for the Crusaders is number 30, and I don't have his name on the roster, unfortunately. That ball checked away, and the Crusaders come up with it. Over on the far side on the attack is Mason Smith with the centering pass out on top. Back on top. The Megs. Working, trying to split the defense. Shot fired off to the left. Crusaders will maintain possession on a shot on goal or a shot attempt and misses. There's a centering pass broken up. Loose ball right in front of the net and kicked out to the side. I'll go into that more in just a second. Hard check off the ball. Still loose, scooped up by the Highlanders. On the attack, good speed across the midfield stripe. Into the attack zone. Shot on goal, knocked away again. And scooping it up. For the Crusaders, there's Brody Maltrud. Highlanders trying to check it away. Double team, knocked out of bounds. And the turnover gives the ball back to the Highlanders. Centering pass on the attack. Fires wide left. And they're going to say that one goes to St. Michael's. On a shot and goal, if the ball goes beyond the inline like that, the ball goes to whoever has a player closest to it. St. Andrews thought that they had a guy in white closer to the ball, but the official thought otherwise, so St. Michael's will take over possession with seven and a half to go in this opening quarter on the far side. Check that out of bounds. And we might get a violation going to be called here on St. Andrews. Behind the net, if we get back to play. Over on the left wing. Highlanders a man down on the penalty, similar to hockey. So a power play situation here for the Crusaders. Shot sails wide to the right, and it'll stay with St. Michael's.
Over on the left side, just outside the crease. And the shot, nice job there by the goalie for the Highlanders. Beautiful play there by Gus Stratton to knock away that point blank shot. And the outlet pass over on the right side. A shorthanded goal attempt here coming up for the Highlanders. In the attack zone fires and deflected up in the air. St. Michael to track down the loose ball. Six and a half to go first quarter. Still tied up one apiece. Penalty is over. Team's back at equal strength. Over on the far side. Pass on the right side. On the center, shot to the left side, deflected away again. The rebound fires, and into the net score. With the rebound for the Highlanders, Jack Stout. The senior with the follow-up, and St. Andrews leads it now 2-1 to one with 5.51 to go first quarter. ball and deflected up in the air and it will roll to the Highlanders come up with it over on the far side. Tiptoeing up the far sideline they're trying to check him out of bounds. Spins away from the traffic and the centering pass a little high but scoops up the ground ball rolls into the zone on the attack right side fires over to the left and that'll stay with the Highlanders with 526 to go. On the attack, the wraparound deflected in traffic. Nice play by the St. Michael's defense. Crusaders go back to work over on the far side. Looks like we got a timeout. So a timeout on the field with 4.56 to go. Two to one, your score, St. Andrews on top. It's been a while since I've seen the boys game and after watching a couple of girls games, it is a lot different. A lot faster, a lot more physical. Now, I have yet to see a girls game, so I don't know what, exactly what the main differences are, but I saw that that one full body check over here. That was pretty vicious. In the, yeah. <laughs> in the defensive zone, I'm like, and then last night I was at St. Stephen's watching uh, watching the boys game there. Right. There, there, there are guys out there beating each other with the crosses. <laughs> yeah. Right. They're just like beating on the dude's legs right. trying to get him to drop the ball. I'm yeah. like, is that legal in this game? If you got some aggression to work out, this might be the game for you. I might have to try it. Uh, like, like my broken old body could do it. <laughs> <laughs> nice bounce back, by the way, for the St. Andrews uh, Girls Club the other night against Lake Travis. They got their head handed to them 18-1 to in the season opener by Episcopal School just two nights before and uh, lost 8-7 to to Lake Travis in overtime. So nice, still a loss, but a nice, nice recovery. After the timeout, play will pick up where we left off. And the wind has resumed. Thanks again to the Rock and Rev, Randy Fry. From the Comfy Cozy Vibe Live Studios. The remote studios up in Missouri, I believe it is. Centering path behind the net. the left wing. Back 
back behind the net. Now on the attack, splits the defense, and the shot deflected away, checked away. Triple team there as that ball goes out of bounds. And it's going to stay with the Crusaders with 4.11 to go. Out on top. Jack Durano with it. He's got the only goal tonight for the Crusaders. That ball checked away. And the Highlanders come away with it. Good speed. Runs through the defense. Four on four. Nice centering pass. Shot into the net. Score. 26 with the goal. Jack Stout with the assist. Was number six. Kate Kilbride set up nicely. And with 3.39 to go in the first quarter, it's 3-1 St. Andrews. After St. Michael's drew first blood, St. Andrews on a 3-0 run here with 3.39 to go in the opening quarter. Ground ball, fought for, still loose, still loose. And the Highlanders come up with it. Daniel let it on the attack in the center, has the ball checked away, cross knocked out of his hands. Crusaders come away with a loose ball. St. Michael's on the attack right side. Bounce pass scooped up behind the net. Let it with it. Looking for the wraparound and blocked away. Nice job there in the point blank, wrap, point blank wraparound attempt for St. Michael's, but a nice save by the freshman Gus Stratton. Kicked up again. We spoke too soon. Blowing hard from right to left across your screen. Centering pass out on top. Let that behind the net over on the right side. Coming up in the two minute mark in this opening quarter. James Meggs over on the left wing. Behind the net to Urano. Out on top. St. Michael's being patient. Good defense here for the Highlanders. Dylan Brucker working his way behind the net, looking for a wraparound attempt, but St. Andrews all over, back on top, and the ball thrown away. Waiting for it, waiting for it, and the Crusaders maintain possession. Obviously, the defensive players on the right side are not allowed to cross that center stripe. Good checking defense there to deny the Crusaders, and the Highlanders come with a loose ball. Could have been turned over, but St. Michael's didn't have anybody in position to take advantage of it with 103 to go in the opening quarter. Long pass, battered away, still loose. A batter for it on the sideline, blocked off the ball nicely. Now loose, and it's gonna roll out of bounds. Who's it gonna belong to? They're gonna give it to the Crusaders with 42.8 seconds to go. A couple of substitutions come in for the Highlanders.
One interesting thing here, there's a scoreboard is only on the right side of the stadium, so St. Michael's doesn't exactly know how much time is left. The officials are counting it down for him on the field. 13 seconds over on the left side. On the attack, eight seconds. Got time to make one more run. Three, one, and they're not gonna get a shot off. Good defense by St. Andrews to deny James Meggs and the St. Michael's Crusaders. And at the end of the opening quarter of play, it's three to one, St. Andrews on top. I will say this, Kevin, I'm very glad you're here because as little as I know about the game, it's a lot easier for me to call it when I don't have to worry about running the camera too. Happy to be in service. <laughs> I am Earl Bircher, and he is Kevin McAdams, the Rock and Rev Randy Fry, back at the Vibe Blast Series, keeping an eye on and ear in the broadcast to make sure that it's staying on the air and looking and sounding good. And thank you to Rock and Rev. Appreciate the uh, the thumbs up there. Our broadcast continues to go well. That's what he says. I take him at his word. <laughs> More uh, boys across coming up next week on Tuesday night. Uh, St. Andrews will take on Cedar Park out here. Not exactly sure who will be doing that game just yet. And then some middle school boys across on Wednesday night. An inter-squad game between the blue and the white for the middle schoolers on Wednesday night. Baseball coming up on Friday night, a doubleheader. St. Andrews taking on St. Dominic Savio from here in Austin. And of course, we mentioned the track on Saturday, so that's what's coming up this week for St. Andrews Athletics here on Vipe Live. You got to do a little middle school basketball from the 31st Street campus. <laughs> that is so much fun, I gotta tell you. It really is. Plus, they've got some real talent in the system. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Starting over there. Hard to believe basketball season's winding down already. Got your uh, got your bracket forms ready for March Madness? I could just pick them out of a hat and do as well as anybody else, I think. <laughs> That's true. So here we go, second quarter underway. Teams will switch sides. St. Michael's now on the attack from left to right. In the center, just outside the crease, and the shot goes wide right behind the net. The centering wraparound attempt is going to go out of bounds, and it'll go back to, well, they're going to say it's going to stay with St. Michael's. Yeah, I thought I heard somebody call timeout. That's odd to have a timeout 14 seconds into the second quarter, but we've got a timeout on the field. How about you? You got yours ready to go? I don't know. I've never bothered in years past, to be honest. I've watched everybody in, like, you know, whatever office I was working in right, right. go crazy for it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's a different world, and uh, I, might I might just participate just this year. Just for the year. heck of it? Yeah. I just haven't had time to watch any. I used to be, growing up in Illinois, I used to be a huge University of Illinois fan. And That's I, like all there is to do there, right? Yeah, everybody everybody just, watch, just plays basketball. When it's minus four degrees outside, you sit indoors and you watch basketball. <laughs> but just don't have time to follow it like I used to. But it's interesting, just, just speaking from the perspective of somebody who's learning to watch and enjoy the game of lacrosse mm -hmm. here, you mentioned a similarity with hockey. <coughs> and I first learned to watch hockey on a TV screen, about a, about a 13 inch TV screen. Right. <laughs> and you couldn't, couldn't see the puck. Right, right. So. A friend of mine told me, watch the players. Yeah. There are certain positions that will always chase the puck, and then there are certain players who will always try to get to where they think the puck is going to be. Right. And if you know who to watch, and I think the same rule will apply here. It's exactly, that's, yeah. Because the ball is, especially up here, where you're so far away, the ball is hard to see when it's inside the, inside the webbing especially, but you get to where, if you watch enough, you get to where you figure out who has it by the way the players move. I haven't reached that point yet, but. Well, there's a reason I'm using a wide camera shot. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and that's one of them. 
St. Michael's back to work here, just underway second quarter. And that ball tipped away and stolen by the Highlanders. Running through the checking attempts. Into the attack zone, pass up on the right side, let them let him a little bit too much. Can they keep it in bounds? Yes, they'll be able to, thanks to the groundskeeping crew of here. And a penalty coming up here on the Crusaders. That's that yellow flag up in the air. It's kind of like hockey. As soon as a St. Michael's player touches the ball, they'll blow it dead, and we'll see how the penalty is assessed. Pass on the left side, and that's going to happen right now. So St. Andrews will have a one-man advantage here. Yeah, St. Michael's has a player in the penalty box. So we'll see how St. Andrews does in their first power play attempt of the night. All right, so man advantage for the Highlanders. Centering over on the right wing. Let's try it on the left side now. Shot rifled, goes wide left, out of bounds. St. Andrews will maintain possession. Another shot deflected, a lot of traffic there. And St. Michael's with the stop. And that's almost intercepted, but the Crusaders come up with it. And the ball checked away, and St. Andrews comes up with it. Long outlet pass, too high, but scooped up over on the right side. Teams back at equal strength. Behind the net, out on top to Patrick Anderson, sophomore. Fighting through the defense over on the right side. Down the net, lost it out of bounds. It'll go back to St. Michael's with 8.39 to go, first half. Crusaders mounted attack across the half court stripe. This is Dylan Brucker with it. Waiting until substitution can be made. Off the check, shot sails wide left. Crusaders maintain possession, 7.53 to go first half. Tan Brasher with it now, working behind the net. 
That ball is thrown away. See if the Crusaders can maintain possession. They cannot. It'll go over to the Highlanders. Aaron Pass gives the ball back to St. Andrews. through the double team. Nice move there. Nifty footwork. Cullen Dawkins over on the right side. Dawkins skips on the attack, flying through the defense. Shot deflected over the net. It'll stay with the Highlanders. Working, looking for the possible wraparound, the centering pass. Too far. And poking it, shoved across the line. And what have we got here? Going to call offside, I believe, on the Highlanders. The St. Michael's with the ball. Down in the right corner, working with this Jack Urano. Spins on the attack. Centering pass on top to Ben Schneider. Schneider working on the right side. Centering on top and intercepted. Interception on the attack is Garrick Zimmerman over on the right side. Centering on the left side, and the shot into the net score. Zimmerman with the steal, the long crossing pass over to Liam Cohagen, and it's four to one St. Andrews. If I remember right from my day streaming around Rock Lacrosse, listen to the guys in the press box, they call the defenders sometimes the long poles. Their crosses are longer. I don't know if that's actually an official term or if they were just making that up, but whatever the terminology, it came into, a, it came into play there. St. Andrews on the attack right side. Back behind the net, centering pass shot. Oh, wide left. Had a good look. Sean Goodlett's shot sails a little wide left. Highlanders will maintain possession. Fans still arriving here at the stadium. We've got 5.25 to go second quarter. Pass on the right side to Ian Zambetti. Jacob off the defense on the left side. Into the net score. The one hopper by Grayson Coffin. I guess it's too obvious to call that a Coffin corner shot. Five to one, St. Andrews. I'm here all week, folks. Not coughing it up. That's <laughs> not for sure. with oh. You probably ought to, but. <laughs> you win. 4.49 to go, first half. 5 1 now. In favor of the host Highlanders. A 5 0 run here for St. Andrews after St. Michael scored the first goal of the game in 18 seconds in. The 
the centering pass, errant, but kept in play by the Crusaders. Checked away, however. Loose on the ground, and St. Michael's gets it back. Poked away again. And finally, St. Michael's will maintain possession, and it looks like we can get a timeout. You have timeout taken by St. Michael's with 3.59 to go in this first half. Just a few games tonight and this afternoon in the Vipe Live world. Baseball tournaments going on. Earlier today, it was Cedar Park knocking off McNeil 15 to nine. One game, two broadcasts, both of those schools part of the Vipe Live family. And going on right now, in addition to our game, we gave you the update uh, from the St. Stephen's boys game Girls game going right now, I believe. Don't have a scoring update, but St. Stephen's baseball trailing ISBL. That's sort of a club, a club type team here based in Austin. ISBL Austin. It's three to nothing after three innings of play. ISBL over St. Stephen's. Here it's 5-1 St. Andrews on top of St. Michael's. Give a shout out to any St. Michael's fans that might be tuned in. Their boys team winning a thriller against Second Baptist in basketball action the other night as they play on. I think they've got a regional game coming up on Saturday if I remember right. Not sure if we'll have it on the air or not. And that ball intercepted. Outlet pass up the right side. Nice spear, but the ball checked away from behind. And here comes St. Michael's on the attack. Checked off the ball. Loose. Still loose. And it looks like St. Michael's comes up with it. St. Michael's gets regrouped and starts to work. Get themselves organized into the attack zone. Over on the right wing. This is Urano with it. Shoved away by Kai Cohagen. 2.20 to go first half. On the attack, right side. Knocked outside of the crease. And I think that was a score, it was. Goal for St. Michael's by Caleb Ebby. They make it 5-2, ending a 5-0 run for the Highlanders. Just outside the crease on the right side. I think Randy probably liked our coffin corner jokes. <laughs> St. Michael's controlling the draw, back working behind the net, trying to pull within two as we're inside of two minutes to go. Over on the right side, that ball thrown away and out of bounds. It'll go back to St. Andrews with 149 left in this first half. through the defense. 
Colin Dawkins. And gets it up over on the right side, and unable to control the pass, and it's going to roll on. No, it stays in bounds. Well, that's one difference between here and uh, some of the schools that play on the field turf. That ball would have rolled out of bounds in a heartbeat on a field turf. And a timeout now taken by St. Andrews, it looks like, with 125 to go. I love the grass. I get the advantage of the field turf, but I love the grass. Uh, it does hurt a little less when you skid. This is true. Yeah. You and me are old enough to remember actual AstroTurf. Oh, boy. Actually playing full contact sports on the stuff at the mini golf course. <laughs> Same stuff. Yeah. Eek. I went to UT in the mid-80s when they had that stuff down there. And back then, they used to open up Memorial Stadium. You could go play, like, intramural football. or just pick a <laughs> football out there. Pretty cool. And we did it for a day. And the next day, I could barely get out of bed. My yeah. back hurt so bad. I don't know how they played on that for real. The Rebel was also commenting in the chat room. Um, of course, the stadium here is uh, dog friendly. <laughs> the fine young bulldog down there. Yeah, there you go. I got him on camera for a few Did seconds. You? That's what that comment is was. Is that about. what that was about? Okay. <laughs> could have brought one of mine tonight. You could have kept stats. <laughs> Uh, the older dog, maybe. The puppy, <laughs> she can't. 125 left in the first half. Highlander ball over on the far side. Out on top to Dawkins. <coughs> See what coach Josh Blumenthal has drawn up here for his Highlanders. <laughs> Behind the net, under a minute to go, 50 seconds to be exact. And that ball kicked away and they keep it in bounds and recovered. Nice possession, nice uh, recovery there. 38 seconds, as if on cue. Back in the back out is Dawkins, 28 seconds. On the right wing, behind the net. Ball poked away, battling for it, time ticking down, 17 seconds. In the far corner, somehow kept it in bounds, and now finally, Lost it out of bounds with 10.5 seconds to go. Nice defense by St. Michael's. See, they've got time to get it the length of the field here. Probably not with six seconds to go. The ball pinned down against the inline. Clock is going to run out. The long pass, and that is going to do it for the first half. St. Michael's with the bookends. They score first. They score last. But in between, five goals for St. Andrews to take a 5-2 lead. We've got a 10-minute halftime. We'll take a break, put the headphones down for just a couple of minutes, be back for the second half action. 5-2 to two, St. Andrews on top of St. Michael's. You are watching St. Andrews Highlander Boys Lacrosse on the Vipe Live Network.
And we welcome you back to Beck Stadium on the campus of St. Andrews Episcopal School here in Southwest Austin, Texas. Merle Bertrand, Vibe Live Broadcast Director, Kevin McAdams, our producer extraordinaire tonight, and the rock and rev Randy Fry back at the Vibe Live studios, keeping an eye and an ear on the broadcast. Five to two, your score at the end of the first half. St. Michael scoring first. St. Andrews with five in the middle, and then St. Michael's with the late goal to trim the Highlander lead to three as we get ready for the final 24 minutes of regulation time. Other games going on tonight. We talked about the girls' game uh, between St. Stephen's and Lake Travis. Lake Travis leading that one six to one at the half. And uh, in baseball action tonight, St. Stephen's has come back to tie ISBL Austin three to three over at St. Stephen's. The only other games going on tonight on the Vibe Live Network. More stuff coming up tomorrow night and throughout the weekend. Tuesday night, a massive night. I think 24 broadcasts on the network in about four different sports as the spring sports finally kick in full strength. I should be free that night. You know, if you need, need anybody. I've got you pegged down for something. <laughs> okay. I'm sure. All right, here we go. Second half about to get underway and false start. A violation on the draw. The ball will go to St. Uh, Andrews as we get underway. Highlanders going from left to right in the home whites with the powder blue numerals. St. Michael's in the road black with maroon trim white numerals. Equal strength for both teams. No penalties to start the second half. Working behind the net, may have had a crease violation. Yep, stepped on the line, crease violation. Nobody allowed to go inside the circle. So the ball will go back to St. Michael's. Crusaders going to work right to left. Dylan Brucker with it, number 18. Out on top to Caleb Abbey. Spun away and the ball taken over by St. Andrews. Tripped up by the turf monster. Pass over on the left wing. Centering pass, the shot. Oh, it goes wide right, but the Highlanders will maintain possession. Good look. Shot a little off the mark, but the Highlanders get it back and start to move again. Centering out on top. Fires into that wide right again. If at first you don't succeed, Highland is trying it again. Behind the net, this is Jack Stout with it. Stout working. As the ball poked away, battling for it. Ground ball scooped up by the Highlanders and maintain possession. Looking on the wraparound, nice play there by the Crusader goalie to deny the point blank ramp around backhander. Still battling for the ball on the right side. Still loose. Still loose up in the air. And what do we got? It'll be a Highlander ball. Just underway second half, 5-2, St. Andrews on top. Boy, it's a nice night until that wind kicks up. Woo. On the left wing, this is Grayson Coffin. Fires into the net score. Well, nothing fancy about that one. And with 9.44 to go third quarter, St. Andrews has rebuilt the four goal lead at six to two. Official as a pick there, loose ball still. Kick, which is legal. Rolls over to the sideline, swatted inbounds. Poked away, and the Highlanders, eh, I thought they were going to get it. Still loose. 
still loose. Ground ball finally scooped out by St. Michael's. Pass on the right side and throw it away. You think a football is hard to pick up when it's bouncing around? Pick up one of those things with one of these crosses with four or five guys swatting at your, at your shins. Centering pass. Into the attack zone. Fights through the defense. Fires one hopper over the net. And out of bounds. Highlanders have maintained possession. 8.57 to go third quarter. Good look from Daniel Lede. Behind the net, right side. Center, fire, sidewinder, goes wide right. Not sure how this is possible. The American flag to the left is blown from left to right. The flag on the right is blown from right to left. Ball checked away, loose, and scooped up by the Crusaders. St. Michael's on the attack. Mason Smith with the centering pass, poked away, and the Highlanders get it back. Here comes St. Andrews from left to right. They've got numbers over on the left side. That ball a little high. Can they track it down before it rolls out of bounds? Not quite. Now to go back to St. Michael's. We have a penalty, however. I didn't see the flag come down. Penalty going to be called on St. Michael's, so power play here for a minute for St. Andrews with 8.03 to go third quarter. Center. Fires into the net. Wow. Almost an over the shoulder shot there. I believe that was William Charrier, number 13, with the goal and a 7 to 2. St. Andrews starting to get a little bit of separation here on the power play goal. Can't tell, can you tell, Kyle, is that 13 or 18? The guy right over there scored that goal. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't either until he turns around. Hopefully we get a better look here. Give credit where credit's due, but first St. Michael's comes up with the draw over on the far side. Working behind the net. One hop, the rebound. De denied by the St. Andrews defense. I believe it's 14. Talking about the player at right field. here in the center. And there's a score. Yep, it's 14. Goal for St. Michael's is number 18. That is a Dylan Brooker to make it 7 to 3. Or were you asking me about the, uh, the, the St. Andrews Michaels player? Yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. That's okay. I think I'm still trying to. I just want to give the credit to the goal. That's a that's, 18. That's an 18. Yeah, so I had the wrong guy. That was Liam Cohagen with the goal. A moment ago for St. Andrews. St. Michael's answers back. 7-13 to go. 7-3 your score. Highlanders on the attack. That ball poked away. And it'll stay with St. Andrews. Behind the net. St. Andrews has the personnel they want on the field. Similar to hockey, they shift change lives. So you'll see a player hold the ball behind the net like that to allow the one player to come off and another one to come back on. Now the Highlanders on the attack right side. 
Swing it over to the left side. Working. Denied by St. Michaels. And a lot of traffic there in that shot. Kicked around. Crusaders come up with it. Halfway through this third quarter. Here comes St. Michael's on the attack from right to left. Hustling into the zone. This is Jack Durano. Checked off the ball and St. Andrews comes up with it. Long outlet pass right side, almost intercepted, but it's not. And on the attack is Grayson Coffin. Coffin, pass left side, shot into the net, score! Goal by Jack Stout off the assist from Coffin. Set up by the Highlander defense. And with 5.35 to go, the lead back up to five now for St. Andrews, matching their biggest margin of the night. Tripped up, and we're going to get ball going to be called here on St. Michael's. The ball will go back to St. Andrews. Pass on the right wing. Working behind the net is Caden Houston. Highlanders can work a little clock here, up by six. Five minutes to go, third quarter. <laughs> Behind the net, splits the defense. Oh, nice look there. But it sails wide right. Well, now I see the flag. I wonder what the, I was looking for the flag. I wonder what the stoppage of play was, but there was a, a marker down over there. Foul called on St. Michael, so St. Andrews once again in the power play with 4.33 to go third quarter. Highlanders looking to match, or looking to get their biggest lead of the night. And they do. Didn't take them long in the power play. Back-to-back -back goals by Jack Stout to make it now 9-3. St. Andrews. I get myself confused sometimes, Kevin, because up until about four years ago, St. Andrews was also the Crusaders. Ah. So every now and then I catch myself. Is that why they changed? I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> I like Highlanders, though. It's a good name. Every now and then, that old muscle memory kicks in, though. I still find myself saying KMAX Sports every now and then, as in about 45 minutes ago. Four minutes to go, third quarter in this one. Nine to three, St. Andrews with the six-goal lead. Centering pass on top. Starts his move into the zone. Right side deflected away. It'll stay with the Highlanders with 3.40 to go. He 
It is brutal when that wind kicks up. Orkin behind the net. Pass goes long, but Highlanders maintain possession. Out on top. Pass them on the right side. And they're going to call it a shot. They will, so Highlanders will maintain possession. Three minutes to go, clock rolling. And that pass off the mark. And the ball will go over to the Crusaders. Similar to an over in the back rule in basketball there. The flag comes flying in. Foul going to be called here on St. Andrews. And now another flag trailing the play. Spins through two defenders and into the net score. Good individual effort there. Was not going to be denied. Jack Iran with the goal. They'll sort out the penalties. So here's a minutiae part that I don't understand yet. And I'll probably be a little smarter tonight, but penalties called on St. Andrews. Nobody's in the box, I'm guessing, like in hockey, wipes out the penalty. So. 2.40 to go, 9-4. Islanders on the attack. Both teams apparently still at full strength. Spins into the attack zone over on the left side. On the left wing. Shot into the net, score. Going down low was Liam Cohagen. And the goal starting to pick up in frequency here with 2.25 to go, 10 to four, St. Andrews up by six. Michaels maintains possession. And the ball poked away by St. Andrews. Highland is on the attack, moving from left to right. Working through traffic over on the left side again. And the shot deflected over the net. Still loose, still battling for it. About a foot away from the end line, centered. One forty-three to go. St. Michael's had it briefly, but the ball checked away, and the Highlanders get it back over on the far side. And looks like we're going to get a timeout with one thirty-eight to go, third quarter. Timeout on the field, ten to four. Your score, Highlanders on top. Track and field coming up here Saturday, starting at around 9 o'clock in the morning, the SAS relays. I'll have that for you here on Vibe Live. More lacrosse coming up next week. We talked about it. The boys against the Cedar Park, I believe, on is that Tuesday night. Yep, that'll be 7 o'clock out here. Middle school intramural game coming up on Thursday night, blue versus white. Baseball coming up Friday, doubleheader at noon and 2.30. St. Andrews taking on St. Dominic Savio from Jaeger Field. And that's the week coming up in St. Andrews Athletics.
still waiting to see if we're going to have St. Michael's basketball coming up this weekend. not a fan of wind. I can deal with heat. I can deal with cold. Wind just annoys me. Yep. <laughs> Could be worse. Could be seven degrees again. Well, like uh, I worked the middle school football game up in Leander last fall. It was... 40 degrees, oh. raining, oh. wind chill. We actually ended that broadcast early because the wind kept blowing the gear over. <laughs> really? <laughs> yep. That'll do it. Back to the action here, 127 to go and counting. Pass on the far side, back behind the net. Centering pass, oh, good job. Uh, good job there by the St. Michael defense. Highlanders had the play drawn up they wanted, had a good look, but the Crusaders deny him. We're coming up on the one minute mark. Pushing it up across the half court stripe. Caleb Ebby with it, working back behind the net. 53 seconds to go. Spins off the defense, got a position, fires, and beautiful job there by the goalie for the Highlanders. Nice job, Gus Stratton, just a freshman, to deny the point blank shot. The outlet pass, however, rolls out of bounds. It'll go back to St. Michael's with 37.8 seconds to go. See if St. Michael's can get one more shot off here as they get their offensive personnel on the field. They've got 23 seconds to work with. Highlanders trying to deny them and keep them from getting into momentum heading into the fourth and final quarter over on the far side. Offsides a call on St. Michael's. Defender got into the offensive zone and St. Andrews gets it back. Nine seconds to go, long outlet pass. Oh, can't come up with it to get off the, the shot. Three seconds. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. But a third, good third quarter for St. Andrews. They take a three-point lead and expand it to six. Heading into the final ten minutes of this one. So 10-4 your score, good buddy, as we head to the fourth quarter. When they're there, you got to take them, Kevin. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm about to put the hammer down on you, dude. No more of that. Anybody under the age of about 25 has no idea what we're talking about right now. Eh. CB radio, the internets of our childhood. It's like I was watching a film from that era not long ago and I'm like, how do I explain this to somebody right. born after 2000? <laughs> it's like when you tell somebody, uh, it's like when you tell a millennial or a Gen Z person, nothing wrong with them, but you tell them, yeah, you know, at one time we were only allowed to drive 55 miles an hour. Right. And they look at you like, what? You're <laughs> kidding. How did you people ever get anywhere? Exactly. <laughs> like, I used the phrase once, hot off the presses, and he had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> they looking for a panini. <laughs> 10 to four, your score heading into the fourth and final quarter on a brisk Thursday night. Thank you for being with us. Thanks, big, big thanks to Jeff McCrary, athletic director here at St. Andrews and Josh Blumenthal, assistant athletic director tonight, wearing his coaching hat, the head coach of the Cruz, uh, Highlanders. See, I almost did it again. 
Got his squad out to a six goal lead here heading into the fourth quarter. Just glad they're finally getting a home game in after the ice storm damaged the field so bad that they had to push everything off for a couple of weeks. I just keep waiting for the plague of locusts. There you go. Got a plague, we've got ice storms. Some toxic waste bubbling up <laughs> in the backyard. Sure, yeah. Fourth quarter about to get underway. Teams have flipped sides, so St. Andrews going out from right to left. This ball rolls across half court, and the Crusaders come up with it. Pass over on the right wing. Verano working right side, cut off nicely by the Highlander defense. The centering pass. The vicious looking backhand there, but it sails wide left. Crusaders will maintain possession. Right now, the clock is the Highlanders' friend, but goals can be scored quickly in lacrosse. So if you're St. Andrews, you can't let down your guard just yet. There's a lot of lacrosse left to be played, 11 minutes to go. Side on the attack, now in the center, draws a crowd, four white shirts there to check him off the ball, and the Highlanders come up with it. Ball poked away, and out of bounds. Gonna go back to St. Michael's. On the far side. And that ball through traffic. Deflected out. And the Highlanders thought they were going to come up, but they kicked up the sideline. Battle for it. Ooh, vicious check there. I don't think it was really anything intentional. It just bodies colliding, going for the loose ball. And got an injured St. Michael's player. It looks like he's sitting up and collecting himself, but I think he's going to be okay. Good to see him get up and walk off. I don't have him on my roster, unfortunately, or I would identify him, but the main thing is he's getting up and trotting off the field under his own power. Nine fifty-four to go. St. Michael's will take over following the penalty. And we get back to the action. And that shot sails wide right, goes out of bounds. Crusade doesn't maintain possession. Over on the right wing. That one over the net and into the next zip code.
lost the lost the handle of it, but gets it back. I think he lost track of the ball momentarily, but tracked it down. Dylan Brucker working, spins off the defense, back behind the net. Centering, back to Brucker. Right side, rolls into the net score. Good work back and forth behind the net. Brooker with the goal. Assisted by Tad Brasher. And St. Michael's not going away with 9.13 to go. They've trimmed the deficit to five. Still a power play situation. Yeah, St. Andrews controls the draw. That one more of a major penalty over here on the sideline a moment ago. So even though the goal was scored, the St. Andrews player stays on the sidelines. Highlanders working shorthanded here. Centering pass, oh, couldn't control it. Over on the left side, had a good opportunity, but couldn't control it. Main thing right now for the Highlanders is they're working the clock down with 8.39 to go. Right side, fires through a crowd, rolls out to the right side. Highlanders get it back, go back to work again on the right side. Teams back at full strength. Coffin with it. Near side. Don't have a 15 on my roster. On the attack, one hops. Seven fifty-four to go. In regulation time. Highlanders on the attack again. Trying to muscle his way to the right side. Now on on top. Pass a little low, gets away. And the fight for it begins near the half court stripe and somebody stepped on the line. Offside called on St. Andrews. The ball will go back to St. Michael's. Highlanders protecting a five-goal lead here. Seven minutes to go. And a penalty called here on the Highlanders. And somehow that one got into the net score. I thought Stratton had it, but it went into and out of the net. And St. Michael's has pulled it within four, 10 to six with 6.46 to go. Talk about the wind, Merle. Yes, sir. Man, when the time comes and we don't have to wear face masks on anymore, uh -huh. I'm still going to keep mine for nights like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's been the one silver lining in that. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps your face warm. Yes, it does. Problem I have is it gives me puppy dog nose. I hate that feeling. <laughs> 
the tip of it's just cold and yeah cold and moist <laughs> <laughs> means you're in good health <laughs> is that what it is i think so i'll go with that all right back to it after the description of the penalty loose ball ground ball still fought for and the crusaders come away with it checked away loose and the highlanders come up with it pass here on the near side to liam cohagen cohagen on the attack on the left side wrap around block loose and a nice play there by the crusader goalie to come up with the loose ball and control it. Here come the Crusaders on the attack. 6.14 to go, regulation time. And the zone checked away from behind. Nice job, and then a good job defensively. Nice play by Kate Kilbride. He checked the ball loose and then blocked out the Crusader player to prevent him from picking up the ground ball. Centering pass. Highlanders on the attack. On the left side, and off the stick. Over on the left side, Highlanders maintain possession. Five forty to go. St. Andrews up by four. St. Andrews will be patient here. Moving into the zone, Cohagen spun himself out, loose ball, and Crusaders pick it up. So the turnover gives it back to St. Michael's with five minutes to go in regulation time. Pass over on the left wing, that's gonna go long and it's gonna roll out of bounds and it'll go back to St. Andrews with 4.49 to go. Landers on the attack, splits the defense as the Crusader player fell down. Working coast to coast. Ooh, took a shot there in the, on the hips, that hurt. Especially on a cold night like tonight. And a timeout gonna be taken by Coach Blumenthal with 4.30 to go in a 10-6 ball game. Happy to have you with us on a Thursday night. Thanks to the Rock and Rev, Randy Fry, keeping an eye and an ear on the broadcast. They've gone final over at St. Stephen's. Lake Travis all over the girls from St. Stephen's, 16 to three in girls across action. After five innings of play, ISBL over St. Stephen's, six to five in a good baseball game. So baseball and us are it on a Thursday night. Hey man, tell me again who's playing baseball in this weather? St. Stevens. Good for them. Yeah. Beautiful weather for tournaments in the daytime yeah. we had today when it was 80 degrees, but boy, as soon as that sun goes down. I'm just trying to remember the orientation of their field over there because I mean, can you imagine this wind getting behind them? I know, I don't think it's much of a wind. Ball. Yeah, there's not much of a wind block if I remember right. Might just might have just been a hit or spark tonight. Yeah. All right, here we go after the timeout. Clock rolling again, four and a half to go. On the right side, this is Ian Zambetti with it. Back behind the net. Go, 
working to his right. Wild shot as he shoved. He tries to get the shot off and it will stay with St. Andrews. Momentary confusion there by the referees. Started to point the other way, so St. Andrews had to wait till the players got back into the zone. 3.45 to go. Clock increasingly becoming the Highlanders' friend. On the attack left side, this is Grayson Coffin. Out on top. To Colin Dawkins. Dawkins swings it over to the right wing to Lucas Webster. Webster working right side. Shot goes high, wide right. Battleford on the far sideline somehow keeps it in bounds. And now it finally rolls out of bounds. It'll go back to St. Michael's with 3.08 to go. That pass is too high, too long, loose ball, and the Highlanders will battle for it. Now they come up with it, and then they throw it over. Crusaders pick up the ground ball. So back-to-back -back turnovers. And the Highlanders come up with it. On the attack right side, this is Cade Kilbride, the centering pass, sidewinder. Nice play there by the Crusader goalie. Two and a half to go. Cross half court. Into the attack zone. Working through the defense. Firing into the net score. Dylan Brecker with the goal to pull the Crusaders within three with 2.09 to go. So they've cut the lead in half from 10 to four to 10 to seven. There's still time, not out of the woods yet if you're a Highlanders fan. Boy, is this draw critical. Everybody's in place. Here we go. 2.09 left in regulation time. And Crusaders come up with it. Over on the left side. Inside of two minutes to go. Pass on the right side. Ball checked away. Nice play there defensively for St. Andrews. And a penalty going to be called here on the Crusaders. That was a nice play by Kay, Kai Cohagen. Pass over on the right side, and it's going to roll out of bounds, but we're going to get a penalty here on St. Michael's. Nice display of sportsmanship after the play there. The St. Michael's, the offending St. Michael's player, just fist bumping his offendee. It's okay, bro. I get it. I'm just making up dialogue now between them. And a timeout on the field with 137 to go. Ninety-seven ticks on the clock and a 10-7 ball game. I will look that up for the Rock and Rev. He wants to know what ISBL stands for. I had to look it up myself earlier today and I've already forgotten. It stands for. Well, I thought I had it. 
Interscholastic Baseball League. ISBL, the Interscholastic Baseball League, that's right. So it's basically exactly what it says on the tin. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of a, a club baseball, they, they describe it as an alternative baseball for high school players. Ah. I know the coach of the Austin team is Roy Canaan, long time coach at Lake Travis. I didn't even know he was still coaching. One thirty-seven left here in regulation time. St. Andrews hanging on to a three-goal lead. And it's Highlander ball. The attack on the right side, centering pass on the top. Loose, but still loose. And the Highlanders come up with it. Over on the right side of Lucas Webster. Checked off the ball. Battle for it on the far sideline in front of the Highlander bench. Kept in play inside of a minute to go. Crusaders come up with it. Being harassed, gets it to the half-court stripe. Clock ticking down, 45 seconds. On the attack right side, this is Mason Smith with it, 35 seconds. And a timeout taken by St. Michael's with 32.4 seconds to go. One final timeout. They're going to try to draw up one more play here. I don't think they have time to score three goals in 32.4 seconds, but you never know. I'm sure stranger things have happened. I'm sure they have. Especially this school year. It's not like, you know, would you would you say you, you need something like a uh, Gus the Kicking Mule level miracle? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah. You hate to say that about any team, but right. three goals in 30 seconds is a tall order. But I'm sure it's happened. Yeah. And hey, if nothing else, it's early in the season. You work on a play that you might need later on in the game where it really, really could make the difference. So here we go, 32.4 seconds to go. You know, somewhere out there, somewhere, somebody's Googling Gus the Kicking Mule right now. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> right. 25 seconds, right side. Through the defense. And checked off the ball. So St. Andrews gets the stop when they need it. 14 seconds to go over on the right side and it's gonna roll out of bounds. Back to the Crusaders for the final 10.2 seconds. Out on top, fires off the side of the net. It rolls out of bounds with 4.4 seconds to go. Time for one more rally. Two, one, and that is going to do it. So St. Andrews took a 5-2 lead in the halftime break, built it up to a six-goal lead, and held on from there to take it a final score, 10 to seven. Kevin, any final thoughts here before we go? Uh, just it's uh, it's been a pleasure working side by side with you again. It's been a very long it's been time. A very long time, yeah. Uh, just like back in the old days, man. Happy That's to right. be here with you. Likewise, 10 to seven, your final score. Thanks to you for tuning in here on the Vibe Live Network. Thanks to the Rock and Rev, Randy Fry. Uh, soon have been kind of technical director. Everyone over at Vibe Media. My name is Merle Birch and along with side Kevin McAdams signing out. 10 to 7, St. Andrews.